In just a moment, Autolite presents Suspense, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead in radio's most famous play, Sorry, Wrong Number. Say, Harlow, have you seen State's football team? They're terrific. Speaking of terrific teams, Hap, my friend, the one that ignition engineered those Autolite resistor spark plugs is Tops. You know, the Autolite people got together with many of the nation's leading car and truck manufacturers, and they ignition engineered a 10,000 ohm resistor right into the Autolite spark plug that permits a wider spark gap setting and maintains it far longer than was ever possible before. You know what that means to your car? Smooth. That's the word for state's football team. Smooth. Right you are. Smooth. Thanks to the wide gap, Autolite resistor spark plugs help your engine idle smooth as silk. And that's only one of the simple, sound, solid, splendid advantages of those sensational Autolite resistor spark plugs. Got it all off your chest, Arno? Sure have, Hap. You're not going to hear one more word out of me till we've heard the whole suspense show. No? No middle commercial tonight, Hap. Autolite doesn't want us to interrupt Agnes Moorhead's performance in that famous drama, Sorry, Wrong Number. Okay, Harlow. Let's hear suspense. Suspense. Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations bring you radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Starring tonight, Miss Agnes Moorhead in Anton Leder's production of Lucille Fletcher's famous suspense play, Sorry, Wrong Number. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 40098 now for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line is always busy. I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? I will be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I'm here all alone in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill 40098. Hello? Hello? Is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello, hello. Uh, hello? Hello, George. Yes, sir. This is George speaking. Hello? Who's this? What number am I calling, please? I'm here with our client, George. Oh, good. Is uh, everything okay? Is but, the coast uh, who... clear for tonight? Yes, George. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Okay. Okay. Uh, where are you now? In a phone booth. What Don't number worry. Is... Everything. Okay. Very well. You uh, know the address. I know, I know. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to the bar on 2nd Avenue for a beer. That's right, 11 o'clock. Okay. Now, be sure that all the lights downstairs are out. There should be only one light visible from the street. Okay, okay. What's that? Uh, just a minute, George. Oh, uh, our client tells me that at 11.15, a train crosses the bridge. It uh, makes a noise in case her window's open and she should scream. Oh, hello. What number is this, please? Okay, I understand. That's uh, 11.15, the train. Yeah. Uh, you remember everything else, George? Yes. I'll make it quick. As little blood as possible. <laughs> because our client does not wish to make her suffer long. That's right. Oh. You'll uh, use a knife? Yes, the knife will be okay. And then afterwards, I remove the rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer because our client wishes it to look like simple robbery. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything's okay. I never... Oh! Oh, how awful! How unspeakably awful! I... Your call. Operator, please. I've just been cut off. I'm sorry. 
What number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 40098, but it wasn't. Some wires must have got crossed. I was cut into a wrong number, and I, I've just heard the most dreadful thing, something about a murder, and... Operator, you simply got to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon. May I help you? Oh, I, I know it was the wrong number, and I had no business listening, but these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they were going to murder somebody, some poor innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge, a and we've got to stop them. We've just got what to. What number are you calling? Please. Well, that doesn't matter. This was a wrong number, and you dialed it for me, and we've got to find out who what was immediately. What number did you call? Oh, why are you so stupid? What time is it? Do you mean to tell me you can't find out what that number was just now? I'll connect you with the chief operator. Oh, I... I think it's perfectly shameful. Now, 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 look, it, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 40098 for me, and you dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I, I simply fail to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again, on purpose. Why, you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 40098 in the same sort of careless way. Murray Hill 40098. I will try to get it for you. Well, thank you. I am sorry, Murray Hill 40098 is busy. I will call you in 20... Operator! Minutes. Operator! Your call, please. You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly and all you did was dial correctly. I am sorry, what number are you calling? Well, can't you for once forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Now, I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty, and it's your civic duty to trace that call and apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you don't... I will connect you with the chief operator. Well, please. All this talk can't make anyone understand. This, much time. this is the chief operator. Uh, chief operator, I want you to trace a call, a, a telephone call, immediately. I, I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down because it, it was about a murder that someone's planning. A terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman tonight at 11.15. I see. Well, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? I am not certain. It depends. Depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. Well, if it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. Well, if it has been disconnected, we cannot. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago, and they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well, I can try tracing it. May I have your name, please? Uh, Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But uh, but listen. And your telephone number, please. Uh, uh, Plaza 32099. But if you go on wasting all this time... Why do you want this call traced, please? Why? Oh, d well, no reason. I I mean, I merely felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers. They're, they're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight, and I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, d no, not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Yes, yes, but meanwhile... I am sorry, Mrs. Stevenson, but I am afraid we couldn't make this check for you and trace the call just on your say-so as a private individual. But you... We will have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake. You mean to tell me I can't report that there's going to be a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why, it's, it's perfectly idiotic. Well, all right, I'll call the police. Thank you. I am sure that would be the best way. <laughs> Ridiculous. I never heard of such nonsense. Police department. I, I can't see why you have to go through all this business. Oh. Your call, please. The police department. Get me the police department, please. Thank you. Ringing the police department. Oh, dear, do you have to dial? Can't you ring them direct? All this time wasted. Police Department, Precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police Department, um, this is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. Huh? I, I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet, but I just overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody is so stupid, and I guess in the end you're the only people who could do anything. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight, and she lived in a house near a bridge. 
Are you listening to me? Uh, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. A- and there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a-, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Well, it's 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 unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. I'm I very see. Ner- no, no. When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, then you can do something. You do you do understand. Uh, what is your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 5353 uh, North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge. The Queensborough Bridge, you know. And we have a private patrol in our street. And, and 2nd Avenue is uh, the next what street. what was oh, that number you were calling? Murray Hill 40098. But that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 4098 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. Uh, I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and see if we can check it with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call of the parties and stop talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes, and personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. Well, now, What good does see, checking I... the call do if they stop talking? By the time you tracked it down, they've already committed the murder. Well, we'll take care of it, don't you worry. I'd say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. Why, I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue, and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder's going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I... I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. 2nd Avenue and the patrolman and the bridge. 2nd Avenue's a very long street, ma'am, and... You know how many bridges there are in the city of New York, well, alone, not know. to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and the Bronx. Well, now, how, how do you know there isn't some little house on Staten Island, on some little Second Avenue you've never heard about? Well, how do you know they were even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. Well, maybe it was a long-distance call you overheard. Oh, I... Telephones are funny things now. Now, look, I... lady, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing you'd got your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be so upset, would you? Well, I know. I suppose not. Only it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. We manage to prevent almost all of them. The clue of this kind is so vague. There isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely you... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking this call was phony or, or that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, did... Well, no, I hardly think so. I, I I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I, I see nobody except my maid, Eloise, and she's a big girl. She weighs 200 pounds. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray, and, and the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He just adores me. He waits on me hand and foot and has scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Well, then, there's nothing for you to worry about. Well, I... Now, if you'll just leave the rest of this to us, we'll take care of it. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Well, will you broadcast it all over the city and, and, and send out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. Good night, ma'am, and uh, thank you. Oh, you! You idiot! Oh, Oh, now, why did I hang up the phone like that? Now you'll think I am a fool. Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? I think I'm ready again. Your call, please. Operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Murray Hill 40098 number again? I I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try to get it for you. Well, try, try. I don't see why he doesn't answer. (laughs) I am sorry. Murray Hill 40098. Is busy, I will call you. I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. <laughs> oh, if I could only get out of this bed for a little while. <laughs> if I could get a breath of fresh air and just lean out of the window and see the street. 
Hello, Albert. Hello. 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello. 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 Oh, for heaven's sake, who is it? Hello. 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 He's trying to call me. What are they trying to do? Your call, please. Hello, operator. I don't know what's the matter with this phone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now, look, look, I'm an invalid, and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble? Please. Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. And now my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds, and when I pick it up, there's no one there. I am sorry. <laughs> If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't you. want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whatever it is, at once. I'm afraid I cannot do that. You cannot? Well, why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. Oh, right. If someone is trying to dial your number, there is no way to check whether the call is coming through the system or not. Oh, uh... Unless the person is trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. Oh, of all the stupid... And meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed, suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I will try to check the trouble check for it. you. Check it! Check it! That's all anybody can do. Oh, what's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid. Oh, I'll fix her. Of all the impudent... How dare she speak to me like that? How dare she speak to me? Your call, please. Young woman, I don't know your name, but there are ways of finding you out, and I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness and insolence it has ever been my privilege. Give me the business office at once. You may dial that number direct. Dial it direct? I'll do no such thing. I don't even know the number. The number is in the directory, or you may secure it by dialing information. Listen here, you... Oh, what's the use? Dear. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm going out of my mind. I'm going out of my mind. Hello? Hello, stop ringing me. Do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now stop it. Stop it. Stop it, I say. Hello? If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police. Do you hear? The police. If oh, Albert would only come home. Oh, let it ring. Let it go on ringing. It's a trick of some kind. I won't answer it. I won't even if it goes on ringing all night. Just ring all night. I don't... <laughs> What's the matter? Why did they stop ringing all of a sudden? Oh, what time is it? Where's my clock? Oh, where is it? Where did I put it? Five to eleven? Oh, they've decided something. They're sure I'm home. They heard my voice answer them just now. That's why they've been ringing me. Why no one has answered me. Why doesn't she answer? Your call, oh, please. Where were you just now? Why didn't you answer at once? Give me the police department. I am sorry. The line is busy. I will call you. Busy? But that's impossible. The police department can't be busy. There must be other lines available. The lion is busy. I will try to get them later. No, no. I've got to speak to them now. It may be too late. I've got to get to... Someone. What number do you wish to speak to? Please? Well, I don't know, but there must be someone to protect people beside the police department, a uh, detective agency. You will find detective agencies listed in the classified directory. But I don't have a classified. I, I mean, I'm too nervous to look it up, and I don't know how to use it. I will it. connect I... you with information. Perhaps they will be able to help you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, you're being spiteful, aren't you? You don't care, do you, what happens to me? I could die and you wouldn't care. <laughs> oh, stop it! Stop it! I can't stand anymore! Hello! What do you want? Stop ringing, will you? Stop it! Hello, is this Plaza 32099? Oh. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. This is Plaza 32099. Uh, this is Western Union. I have a telegram here for uh, Mrs. Elbert Stevenson. Is there anyone there to receive the message? Uh, I am Mrs. Stevenson. Uh, the telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York, darling. 
Terribly sorry, try to get you for last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Oh. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy, love, signed Albert. Oh, no. You wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> no. No, I don't believe it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it, not when he knows I'll be all alone in some trick, some fiendish trick. <laughs> Your call. Please. Operator, try that Murray Hill 40098 number for me just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. Oh. M. U. I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. <laughs> I don't care what he says or, or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to some consideration. <laughs> Information. May I help you? I want the telephone number of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? No, it, it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley, H-E-N-C-H. One moment, please. Uh, please hurry. And, and please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh. Oh, for heaven's sake, I have no time to be dialing. The number of Henchley Hospital is Butterfield <laughs> 8. Nine, nine, seven, oh. You. Hospital, good evening. Uh, give me the nurse's registry. Who was it you wish to speak to, please? I want the nurse's registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And what is the nature of the case, madam? Nerves. I'm very nervous. I, I need soothing and companionship. You see, my husband is away, and I'm all... Have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see why all this catechizing is necessary. I want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago, and after all, I do expect to pay this person for attending me. We quite understand that, madam. But registered nurses are very scarce just <laughs> now. Our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm, I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm very upset. Very. I, I'm alone in this house and I'm an invalid. And, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. A woman's going to be killed when a train comes. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I will speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. Miss and what is your name, madam? When do you expect her in? I really couldn't say. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Oh, but it, it's not 11 yet. Oh, oh, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? Just, um, 15 minutes past 11. What was that? What was what, madam? That, that click. Just now, in my own telephone, as though someone had lifted the receiver off the hook, off the extension telephone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. Now about but this I nurse. Did. I did. There's someone in this house, someone downstairs in the kitchen, and they're listening to me now. That is. Oh, I, I won't pick it up again. I won't let them hear me. I'll, I'll be quiet, and then they'll, they'll tell me. Oh, but if I don't call someone now while they're still down there, there'll be no time. I've got to get to that operator. Oh, answer. answer. Your call, please. Operator, operator, I'm, I'm in desperate trouble. I, I am sorry, I, I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I, I don't dare. I, there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I am sorry. Oh, but you've got to hear me. Oh, please, please, you've got to help me. There's, there's someone in this house, someone who's going to murder me, and, and you've got to get in touch with the police. Oh, oh, there, there it is. Did you hear it? 
He's put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's coming up the... He's coming up the stairs. Oh, give me the police department. Give me the police department. One moment, police please. Do... I will connect oh, you. hurry. Hurry. Oh, hurry, I can hear him. He's coming. He's coming here. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, what are you going to do to me? Oh, no! Oh, no! Don't look up near me! I haven't done anything, please! I don't know anything! No! No! Hey! Hey! Department, Precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Hello, Police Department, Precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police Department? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Must have got the wrong number. Don't worry. Everything's okay. Thank you, Miss Agnes Moorhead, for another memorable performance. Miss Moorhead will return in just a moment. Say, Harlow, you got so wound up on Autolite resistor spark plugs a while back, you never told me whether you saw the state football game last week. You bet I saw it. And say, did you notice the big gaps that state knocked in that enemy line? <laughs> yes. Reminded me of that wide gap in Autolite resistor spark plugs. Now, Harlow. You know, when you replace your old narrow gap spark plugs with wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs, by Cornelius, your engine idles smoother. You have better luck with lean gas mixtures. Actually save gas. Carlo, I'm talking about football. Oh, by the way, how'd you like the way State's line cut down enemy interference? Great. Almost as good as the way Autolite resistor spark plugs cut down spark plug interference with radio and television reception. What a team. What a team. Yes, friends, when it comes to team play, you really get it with those sensational new Autolite resistor spark plugs. Another Autolite engineering first. And no wonder, for Autolite resistor spark plugs are one of over 400 automotive, aviation, and marine parts made by the 26 nationwide Autolite plants, all famous for Autolite-engineered dependability. So, friends, don't dilly-dally, dawdle, or delay, but hop down tomorrow to your friendly Autolite dealer and get a set of wonderful new wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. He's got just the type and size to fit your car. And, friends, remember, too... Autolite means spark plugs. Ignition engineered resistor spark plugs. Autolite means batteries. Stay full batteries. Autolite means ignition system. The lifeline of your car. And now here again is Miss Agnes Moorhead. My thanks to producer Tony Leader for affording me this opportunity to play Lucille Fletcher's wonderful story once again. And my thanks to the cast and the musicians and sound men who helped make it successful. The suspense program will always hold a special place in my affections. And I'll be listening with great interest next Thursday when radio's outstanding theater of thrills brings us little Margaret O'Brien starring in Ray Bradbury's story, The Screaming Woman. Another gripping study in... Suspense. Agnes Moorhead has recorded Sorry, Wrong Number in album form. Miss Moorhead may currently be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Johnny Belinda. Music on tonight's suspense play was composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. In the coming weeks, suspense will present such stars as Ronald Coleman, Rosalind Russell, Claude Rains, and William Bendix. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. And next Thursday, same time, hear Margaret O'Brien in... The Screaming Woman. This is the Autolite Suspense Show. Volunteers are needed for the armed forces of the United States. Your nearest recruiting station will have complete information. Good night. Switch to Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.